Hello, Student Standard. How are you? Have a good day. Today is our thirteenth video class, and today we are going to discuss reproduction in plants. What we have learned as first chapter. We have completed uh, two three chapters now. So just I want to rewind all the points what you have learned. And uh, by now I am sure you have written objective type test also, is it not? And that I hope you have found easy. And I want you to go through line by line all the textbook words, whatever you don't know, you will just mark it and you will clarify. That is the way you have to prepare. And all the key words are in biology. There are many. Technical terms. Technical terms na scientific terms are that all that has to be learnt well, right? Now first reproduction in plants. What is given in our textbook? First is about sexual reproduction. Now first, what is reproduction? We should know the definition. Reproduction. Question: What is reproduction? You should know the definition. Reproduction is the continuation of the species or perpetuation of the species. I repeat: Reproduction is the continuation of the species or perpetuation of the species. Now, what are the types of reproduction? As asexual. And sexual reproduction. What are the types? Asexual and sexual reproduction. What are the types of reproduction? Asexual and sexual reproduction. What is asexual reproduction? When there is no involvement of gamete, or when there is no formation of gametes, it is said to be asexual. So here, no formation of gametes. No formation of gametes. What are gametes? Male and female gametes formed by the sex organ. So here, here there is no formation of gametes, and then only single parent is involved. Only single parent is involved. I hope you understand this. Okay, so there is no formation of gametes. Only single parent is involved, and as there is only single parent involved, there is no variation occurs. No variation. Occurs. Are you clear? No? I repeat, asexual reproduction. What is it? There is no formation of gametes. Only single parent is involved, and no variation occurs. What is variation in a family when there are two children? Both of them are not alike. Is it not? And they are. Slightly or mostly different from each other. That is different characters of the race species. So that is variation. So asexual. I repeat, no formation of gametes. Only single parent is involved, and no variation occurs. Whereas sexual reproduction, what is it? Are they opposite? Formation of gametes. Formation of gametes. Then two parents are involved, male and female. Male and female parent is involved. Male and female parent are involved. Third one, there are variation occurs. Variation. 
very important. Are you clear? Huh? So sexual reproduction, I say formation of gametes. Male and female parents are involved and variation will occur. A male and female, they have different characters. So that is, those characters are brought to the offspring. Offspring na the child. Offspring, alana, inno na varandhi, proje nengi chukwa. Child child chukwa, and varandhi, inno na peru, proje nengi on offspring. There are newly formed daughter cells. That is progeny or offspring. Okay. So the difference between you should create what is asexual reproduction and what is sexual reproduction or what are the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. For that we have to Write this answer. Terima, not panic area, will be pass panic, will second the not panic. Okay, no formation of gametes, only single parent is involved, no variation occurs. Whereas here, formation of gametes, male and female parent are involved, variation will occur in the progeny or offspring. Variation will occur in progeny or offspring. Okay, so this is difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. Are you clear? Not very clear? Hmm? So that you will learn by heart. If you want to learn by heart, you will learn by heart. Right? If you want to pass the video, you will learn by heart. Right? The next one, is about the sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in flowering plant in flowering plant for sexual reproduction in flowering plant sexual reproduction flower is the reproductive organ. In sexual reproduction Flower is the reproductive organ. In that, bud is the appearance of bud is the first sign of reproduction. Appearance of bud. Mutta shilole pu mutta. That is, appearance of bud is the first sign of reproduction. Then, when it blooms, it has the following parts of the flower. What are the parts of the flower? As we know, we should know parts of the flower as calyx formed of sepals. Now, to me, the way to the pathana, corolla formed of petals and andrisium, andrisium is the male part of the flower formed of stamen and the dionysium dionysium is the female part of the flower formed of pistil this is the parts of the flower in the lab busted Appearance of bud in the leaf plant is the first sign of reproduction. The parts of the flowers are calyx formed of sepals, corolla formed of petals, and rhesium is the main part of the flower formed of stamens, and gynecium is the female part of the flower formed of pistil. Now this calyx in hibiscus flower, we have a book of hibiscus flower. Okay. Now calyx, it is formed of sepal. Calyx is a sepal, single sepal. It is formed of sepal. Namula, numari, kulla.
is kilometers. There are five sepals. Okay. So here this is single sepal. Here are the kilometers. Now when we flower, button is not there. It is not there. It is not there. It is not there. It is not there. So, now we book there. One is flower in a bud condition, another one opened flower. So, flower in a bud condition in the market. Here, the lamb, calyx, the lachpoon, the other one, the world, the chup 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 by the condition. When the flower is opened up, we find we can separate calyx, corolla, andesium, and dimension. So yeah, the sepal only we do like this. When the corolla hibiscus on the red in color, yeah, the red boha we have white, pink, yellow, orange, there are different colors. They are called hybrid variety. So, and I am drawing a corolla. When the petals are dissected out, removed, the five petals are arranged like this. Petals are arranged like this. One, two, three, four, five. This is corolla. And a single petal, I discussed only with fringe marks. In the petal. This is single petal. Okay. So, first is calyx, we do like this. Then corolla, five petals. This is single petal. Hibiscus, Chambati Pula, Oval Pula, B in the engine in the Pula, and we will fringe the petal. That is called fringe the petal. F R I G N K A. Fringe petals. I hope you understand this. Okay. So, the next one is Andesium, as main part of the flower, where in hibiscus, the stamen. They are arranged like this. As this is anther lobe, and this is colon, and this is filament. I repeat, and we shape it is found of numerous stamens, and those stamens they have a stalk called filament. And a cap like anther, that is anther lobe, in which pollen grains are arranged. Pollen grains are the main element. Are you clear? Huh? Again, in high business, the pollen is the, what is it, uh, statement, they are arranged on a structure like this. This is called staminal tube. This is known as staminal tube. Now, in the staminal tube, these numerous stamens will look yellow color arranged like this. Numerous stamens are arranged like this. The stamens are yellow in color. The filament is red and the lobe is yellow color. So, this is statement. I hope you understand. Hmm? So, this angry shape made part of the flower formed of statements. Okay. The next one, gynecium, it is also called pistil. Now, this pistil, again, you can also. Pistil has look here. This is basal swollen ovary, 
and then long step. Basin, swollen ovary, long style, hibiscus lip ending in five stigmatic branches. In hibiscus chamber tipo, there is a basal swollen ovary, basal swollen ovary, and inside that we find the ovules. We do ovules like this. Okay, this is ovules, and this is style, and this is stigma. I repeat, Vanishia, it is also called pistil, where it is having basal swollen ovary. Inside that, ovules are present, then long style ending in stigma. In hibiscus, there are five stigmatic branches. Where normally, in, others, in other flowers, stigma will be one. But only in hibiscus, it is five stigmatic branches. Okay. So now this pistil, we say ovary. Yeah. Now this ovary, again, when we take cross section, we find it structure like this. When we find cross section of the ovary, otherwise TS of ovary, we find structure like this and there are five chambers one two three four five and inside that the ovules are arranged so this is ovary ovary fall this is ovule so here this is TS for ovary I repeat in the tears of ovary, in hibiscus, the outer layer, suppose it is a gynecium, it is gynecium, what I am holding is the ovary, it is the style, the red is the ending in stigma. Now the ovary here, when we cut like this, this is, in the mari cut from the ovary, transfer section mari, round the that is cross section of the ovary or transverse section of the ovary. Otherwise, it is like this. We, we take the lady's finger there, the pentacles of the molar. So, when it is cut, we find five chambers. Is it not? The same five chamber is this. Okay. Now, this chamber it is called logule. Locula chamber. The chamber of the ovary is called locule. We come across another term called the carpal. These five chamber, each one is called a carpal. So we say hibiscus, it is pentacarpillary, five carpals. It is one no other carpal. And pentalocular, pentalocular na five chambers. And ovules, they are arranged in the center of the ovary. That is the description for the gynecium. Okay, so I repeat, gynecium, it is also known as pistil. It is found of basal swollen ovary enclosing the ovule. Continued as style ending in stigma. The stigma is five branches that is present only in the hibiscus flower. Okay. Now in the transverse section of the ovary, we find what outer ovary wall inside that five chambers of locules where the ovules are arranged in the center axis. So this is described as pentacarpillary, pentalocular ovules arranged on the center axis. And uh, vanishing, it is also known as pistil. 
this is female part of the flower. Okay. So now here, calyx and corolla, they are non-essential world or accessory world because after fruit formation they will fall off for weather off. Whereas andesium and gynesium they are the essential part because andesium is producing male gamete, pollen grain and gynesium is producing female gamete, the ovule which contains the egg nucleus. So these two are essential organ. So yeah. And after the release of pollen grain and uh, reaching the ovule, fertilization will occur. That we will continue next. Shall we continue? One minute. Check for it. Shall I? So, the parts of the flower diagram also I have drawn here as you should draw in the same order. Calyx. This is single sepal, this is whole sepal, then petal, the corolla, then this is single petal, then andesium, this is the staminal tube, and then this is the single stamen, and then this is the pistil, and uh, this is ovary one. TS of ovary litter, ovary wall with the ovules inside. Okay? And you should know this diagram. This is the end part of the drawn label TS of ovary or drawn label gynesium or drawn label petals as dissected in the event. And we look at in the petals at this side, dissected petals. This is the single petal marina. Draw and label andesium of hibiscus gravana in the standard tube coated single stamen variable. Okay? And this draw and label gynesium in, we should draw this gynesium and TS of ovary. I hope you understand. So, yeah. Now, next is, next event is in a flowering plant, the next uh, process of sexual reproduction is pollination and fertilization. A diagram I take a video of the past photo to another book. So here this is pollination and fertilization. Pollination and this is fertilization. Pollination and fertilization. Now, what is pollination? So, the transference of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma is called pollination. The transference of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma is called pollination. And it is of two types. One is Self-pollination and the one is cross-pollination. What is self-pollination? Self-pollination is the transference of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the another flower on the same plant, same species. Whereas cross-pollination is transference of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of different plant of the same species. Okay. So this pollination has self and cross pollination. Okay. Now you have learned one term protangress. Protangress and protogyne. Protangress and protogyne. Normally in cell pollination, within the uh, pollen grain to reach within the same flower, it needs some agents to reach the 
stigma to take the pollen grain to the stigma. So, there are some aliens, they are called pollinators. They are called pollinators. Now, self pollination, typical example grass paddy. Main grass paddy. Although pollen grains are reaching the stigma, it cannot reach the ovule straight away. It needs some jerk, some disturbance so that pollen grain will reach the ovule. And that disturbance, that jerk is given by some insects as agent and that create vibrations of the Dimension, that by reaching the ovule, that by pollen by reaching the ovule. They are called pollinators. Normally, insects are called pollinators. So, yeah. And this protellus and protogyne, in some plants, gynesium will mature first, and in some, andesium will mature first. Actually, when the flower on the whole mature, another thing, pollination of fertilization is possible. But some plants, apple, plum, for example, spookle. I love that. When anthracium matures first, it is said to be protagonist. When gynecium matures first, it is said to be protogynous flower. How will you remember when the main group grows together? Rupta and Rasunde and Rishia, Gaini and Gainishi. You should remember like that. Okay. Now, after cross pollination, there are agents of cross pollination. They are as wind, as anemophily. Wind pollination, anemophily. Water pollination, Hydrophily, water pollination, hydrophily, and the third one, uh, pollination by bird, it is ornithophily. Pollination by bird, ornithophily. Pollination by insect, it is entomophily. Pollination by insect, it is entomophily. These are all agents of pollination. Enolam, wind, anemophily, water, hydrophily, bird, ornithophily, insects, entomophily, and any other animals, when it is helpful, it is said to be zoophily. These are the agents of pollination. Yeah. Now, what are the characters of wind pollinated flowers? They are light in weight, producing large numbers so that they can be carried away easily by the wind. And enormous amount of pollen grain to be produced because it is, we are not sure that all the pollen grains released in the air will reach the concerned correct plant uh, female part of the flower for pollination for fruit formation so it enormous amount of pollen grains are produced okay and as water pollination it is hydrophily typical example is the example grass and water example varus nevia where the male and female plants are separate and it has a ribbon shaped green leaves. Varus nevia. It is a water plant. Varus nevia. It is a water plant where it has a ribbon shaped leaves like this. It is a ribbon shaped leaves like this. So this is female. This is female plant. And this is male plant, where the male plant is producing numerous 
May flower of the inflorescence in cluster. It is the May. Whereas here the female we have a long stalk and then it floats on the surface of the water. I repeat, in Valisnaria it is a water plant. This is Valisnaria. Valisnaria it is a water plant where male and female separate. When male flower will produce numerous Male flowers in cluster like this, whereas female will be a single flower. Now, when this cluster of male flowers, when they produce pollens in large number, that will be released by the plant and then it is floating on the surface of water. Same way, when the female plant with the long stalk of the flower, uh, uh, plant when it is a flower when it is just floating on the water current when it reaches by chance it is receiving the pollen plant thereby pollination occurs okay then third one is bird onychophily and the fourth one is insect endomophily where the flower will have three petals of the uh, forming the upper leg on the top and two petals, it will be two petals united. These are all three petals united. Here and the platform marium, it will be the shade marium. So in the center, so the artesium and dionysium will be present. When the insect sits here on the Lower petal, you know, insect. When it sits on the lower petal, the pollen grain will be dusted on the, even in the male petal, the amukalol, the pollen grain will be sticking on to the body of the insect. And when this visit, insect visit another flower, Adila on the duster. This is insect pollination. Okay? So there are five types of Agencies, wind pollination, anemophily, water pollination, hydrophily, bird pollination, ornithophily, insect pollination, entomophily, and animal pollination by animal, it is zoophily. So, yeah. so this is for pollination in agents of pollination. Right? Now, so as a result of pollination, the pollen grains are landing on the stigma for the next event to occur. So, in sexual reproduction, there are two major events. One is pollination, another one is fertilization. So, now the pollen grains are reaching the stigma of the female pistil. So this is the pistil. Right? So pollen grain is stigma is the landing place for pollen grain. Okay. Now in high vistas, now high vistas, this is the stigma, the gynation. Okay. And then this gynation Gynation is the Okay. Then, in the gynation continuation is the continuation of the layer That is the staminal cube. In the staminal cube. Okay. And then from here is the petal. This is the petal. So it is around the numerous statements on um, the line of staminal tube. Like it is around the staminal tube. Okay, right? So, and this is ending in stigmatic 
branches ending in stigmatic branches okay so here as gynoecium is enclosed by uh, gynoecium enclosed by the antherium in hybris so now that we told you okay so staminal tube is enclosing the gynoecium so now we have to bring the culture the needle la culture la and they are going to I hope you understand. Now come to fertilization. In the name fertilization is the fusion of male and female gamete. Yeah. Okay. And then the pollen grain should reach the stigma through pollination. Now the pollen grain it is having a structure like this, having outer two layers. Outer layer is not smooth in nature, having spinous projection. This is pollen structure. The outer layer is exine, and inner layer is intine. And this is having nucleus and cytoplasm. So yeah. Now when this pollen grain is growing. For reaching the ovule, that process is called germination of pollen grain. The process of growing of pollen grain and reaching the ovule, it is called germination of pollen grain. So, you know, in the pollen grain, the spinous production is there. The spinous production is there. It is producing. Through one of the germ opening, it is producing a tubular structure that is called pollen tube. Tubular structure that is called pollen tube. So that pollen tube is gradually developing and reaching the ovule. That is pollen grain. It is reaching the ovule. Like this. Okay. This ovule, it is, this is ovary wall. This is ovary wall. Now this is ovule. The layer is formed of integument. Layer is formed of integument. Okay. And then this is called embryo. This is called embryo sac with the eight nuclei. Embryo sac with the eight nuclei. The nuclei are just a few minutes old. Ovule having integument, the layer of outer covering of ovule that is called integument. Inside of it, it is having. A structure called embryo sac, and that embryo sac will have eight nuclei. Male nuclei, one one are another one. So yeah, so this is one egg nuclei. So this is one egg nuclei. So will fuse with the pollen grain. So by the time the pollen, when it reaches the ovule, it the pollen will take the nucleus of the pollen the nucleus is there in the in the nucleus here you can just put it there nucleus so put away there so in the nucleus when it reaching the ovule it divides into two one fusing with the egg nucleus another one with the another nucleus so two Pollen grain, sorry, pollen grain with two male gametes fusing with two nuclei in the embryo sac. In the third one, number seed formation one day, ovule will become the seed. And the seed will the developing embryo radical primeo primeo natural primeo. That is one day embryo proper. Another one it is called cotyledon or endosperm. The seed that we have been seeing, the pattern, the structure, 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 the
it is forming the seed root. Another, the mochi, you, bean, you, and a wooden weapon, and the wood of a ground, and the seed, and the healthy seed, and damaged seed, and the way it will come out. Yeah, and the seed root. Okay, and that seed root, and children, children. Outer layer is called castor, inner layer is called tegmine. I hope you understand. Okay. Uh, uh, I hope you follow this. Right? We will continue in the next course. Thank you.